Hi guys, it's Amy here and today I bring you my July wrap up. So first things first, please do excuse the very strange colour of my fingers. I had red nail polish on and I took it off and now I look like I have some strange fingernail disease so I hope this doesn't distract you, it's distracting me. So today is officially the last ever wrap up that I'm going to film with this setup because tomorrow is the move and I will be leaving all of this. In fact my parents are demolishing my shelves, they're taking them down, so that just makes me feel really sad. So I will film them and do something I think beforehand because I want to look back on them. So today I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the books that I read in July. I read 10 all together, so let's start from the lowest star rating. Kicking it off with the two stars, firstly we have The Park Bench by Shibute. This is a silent graphic novel and unfortunately I just didn't get along with the story, I didn't connect to it, I thought it was just a bit meh, it was a bit bland. It essentially followed the story of a park bench and the whole thing that there's no words and so you just see what happens to this park bench and the people that go by it but it just, I don't know, it lacked a bit of soul for me I guess. It definitely didn't leave like a long lasting impression on me to be honest I can't really even remember what happened so unfortunately that was two stars from me. The second two stars is the book that I read with my best friends for our book club. I haven't actually managed to speak to them about it yet so that's happening this weekend at some point and that is The Circle by Dave Eggers. So although I gave this one two stars I did find it quite a page turning read. I did enjoy the ideas, I thought they were really interesting and the whole kind of scope of it was an interesting topic but there are numerous different things that really bugged me in this book and so I just don't think I could have given it any more. In fact I firstly I gave it three stars and then I knocked it down to two stars because I thought over it overnight and I just thought no like I don't think it deserves any more than that. This essentially follows a woman named May who gets a job at this place known as The Circle. It's essentially like a internet based thing which has control of like lots of stuff so kind of like your Facebook account but then like joined in with your bank account and all these other things as well so they pretty much like rule everything in terms of the internet and things. May loves working at this place, she thinks it's amazing and they bring in all these like new and crazy like inventive things like having like surveillance like all the time like she walks around with a camera on her all the time and like is constantly being surveyed so people can see what she's doing like whenever and just loads of things like that. The issues I had were the characters just all seem so flat like May as a person she just had no like inner thoughts on things and she had no like strong opinions on anything like everything she just went along with she was so easy brainwashed into this whole thing and it was just I don't know I just found it a bit unbelievable because I just hated reading through this character that had no like inner innerness about them like no like no like all these things were happening and I was just like what the hell is wrong with you like who would not think like have second thoughts about whatever is going on in this situation so that bugged me the sexual encounters that she had throughout the book I found really bizarre and I don't know whether it was because it was written by a man or whether he was meant like trying to go for it but I just like I, I don't know I found it really uncomfortable and it was just a bit strange going back to finding the characters really flat I wouldn't have been surprised if like halfway through this novel it turned out that all of the people working at the circle were actually robots and I was hoping that that was actually going to be the case because I just found all of the characters to be so bizarre and like not human-like and so yeah I wouldn't have been surprised like that doesn't happen but yeah. I also found the ending really frustrating and how that all came about and I thought it all just happened way too quickly at the end. The book was way too long, it should have just either been shorter and like the kind of big conclusion should have happened sooner or like I don't know like it was all just a bit rushed and I didn't like that so yes that's why I gave it two stars. <laughs> Moving on to my three star reads, firstly we have a poetry collection and that is Hold Your Own by Kate Tempest. I really wanted to love this one as much as I know a lot of people do but I feel like I just didn't know enough of the context of these poems to understand them fully and appreciate them fully. So I'm tempted to say at the moment it's a three stars and maybe in the future once I learn more about this topic it's kind of centered around like ancient myths and those kind of things and gods and gods goddesses and things uh, then maybe I'll come back to it and revisit it and see how I get along with it then. The classic that I read in July was Lady Orderly Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. This one was really great. The only reason I didn't give it like higher than a three star was just because it was pretty obvious what was going on like all the way through and I felt like it like I wanted like a Agatha Christie kind of reveal or like some kind of thing because it is essentially a mystery but it was very like I mean even from the title it's kind of obvious 
from the get-go what is going on and so I feel like I couldn't give it any higher than three stars just because there was like something lacking for me like I wanted a bit more from it I wanted there to be a surprise that just never like came along unfortunately so this one follows a woman named Lady Orderly and she has a big secret as the title would suggest and to be honest I can't really say more about what the book is about because as soon as I do I think most people would guess what the secret is and what is going on so I'm not going to share any more. If you want to go and read a synopsis for it you're very welcome to. I would recommend it though, it was a fun read. Moving on to my four star reads for the month, in fact the rest of the books I have here are all four star reads so it was pretty good for the four stars this month. Firstly we have The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. This is an apocalyptic novel set in London. London has been completely flooded so all the inhabitants have had to like move out of London and seek shelter elsewhere. We read through the perspective of a mother and that is the primary theme of this this book like although the apocalypse is happening the main thread is this motherhood and like what it means to be a mother and regardless of the fact of the kind of world potentially ending and everything being shaken up motherhood is still the same thing and then people are still needing to provide for their children and things. I thought the way this book was told was really interesting like there weren't any names everyone was just like identified by a letter so like a b c d whatever that is letters alphabet amy <laughs> there was almost this separation between you and the characters but i really liked that like it was really simple and the the actual like structure of the book the sentences were really short and almost like snippets like real like little statements about what was going on rather than going really into depth into conversations and how people were feeling and things it was just like you know it was almost like flashes all the way through this apocalypse and and it was just really interesting i really liked the way it was told there was also just some really fantastic poetic like writing it was just really really wonderful i'm a big fan of apocalyptic fiction so this kind of ticked all the boxes for me so yeah i'd highly recommend to any who enjoy that kind of thing next we have a commonwealth by Anne patchett this one tells the story of two families who kind of are uh, all intermingled because like one person has an affair and ends up with another person's wife and, and all the children end up having to like stay within these families and it just tells the story of their lives and it like goes back and forth between generations of this family and the way it's told is just so fantastic. The interweaving of these storylines and the emotion that is created around these people it's just beautifully told and Anne Patchett has a beautiful way of writing characters that really kind of draws you in and, and really makes you believe these people are real. It's not an action-packed book so if you're looking for something like that then maybe this isn't for you but it's very subtle in the way that it all flows through and you end up just really involved in these people's lives and although nothing much happens it's such a heart-wrenching and, and beautiful story. I just I thought it was really wonderful. I feel like I haven't given you much of what happens but I feel like this is just one that you need to experience for yourself like I just really enjoyed it so there we go Next for the four stars we have Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. This is a graphic memoir so it is all comic kind of strip here but it is non-fiction, it is Marjane kind of sharing her life experience. So this follows Marjane's life all the way from being a young child up into her 20s or 30s. I think. Marjane is born in Iran and you see her grow up and all the kind of traditions and the culture of Iran and the religions that are there but then also you see how these kind of more strict rules and religions and things kind of get pressed in on the country and, and how things slowly change over the years and the kind of outbreaks of riots and the people protesting and all these different rules and regulations that come into play and how that affects her and her family. It's an incredible story and really heartbreaking at times. Around the age of 15 Marjane moves out of the country. Her parents think it's going to be more beneficial for her like in the long term to live away from the kind of country that's in turmoil at the time and, and to have more of experience and kind of be educated outside of the country so she goes into Europe to uh, be educated and kind of find herself and things and out there she maybe doesn't have the experience that she expects to have but she definitely has a lot of interesting things happen to her and that part of the story I found really really interesting because her experiences there are so in contrast to what is going on in Iran like she goes out drinking and she takes drugs and things like that and in Iran it's so strict people are wearing 
wearing the veils and and it's just so different and that element of the story was just really brilliant. Since reading this I've been told that the animation of this book is fantastic and I should watch it so that's definitely something that's going to be added to my list to watch soon. Next to the four stars we have my Shirley Jackson book for the month and that is The Sundial. Of the Shirley Jackson books that I've read so far this year this has definitely been my favourite. So again this is an apocalyptic type novel and it also has elements of kind of cults and kind of cult mentality I guess. So we follow the Halloran family who live in this big like manor house estate kind of thing that's cut off from the whole village and, and they're in this huge thing. This is a common theme in uh, Shirley Jackson books I've found. So many generations of this family live in this one big house and the aunt of this family one day when she's out in the garden she gets lost in the mist and she's wandering around and she stumbles across the sundial and while she's there the ghost of her father comes to her and tells her that the end of the world is coming and if she wants to save her family and friends they all need to stay inside the house when it happens. So she goes back to the rest of the family and shares this news with them and then the rest of the story is them building up to like the apocalypse day and the day when everything outside of the house is going to end and them planning like what they need to have and what they need to bring and like all of the people that they might want to keep in the house with them like to save them as well. In comparison to the other Shirley Jackson books that I've read so far this one was really really funny like it had such brilliant dark humour like I found myself really like chuckling along with like the stuff that was going on like the people had really like sarcastic like mannerisms and the things they were saying were just really really funny. If you've been keeping up with my reviews of Shirley Jackson's books so far you'll know that some of them I just don't understand like they get to a point and I'm just like what is going on like this book has like gone off like a ledge and I don't know what's going on. This one however was brilliant I understood it all the way through luckily, which was nice. And so yeah, I'd highly recommend this one if you're looking for a Shirley Jackson read to pick up soon. The penultimate four-star read I have here is A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman. This, I believe, was the winner of the, yes, it says here, winner of the Man Booker International Prize this year. So this one is set in a small Israeli town and we as the readers are reading through the perspective of a man who has gone to view a comedy show. And as the story goes on, we find out that he has been invited there by the guy who is doing the comedy on stage and that they have some kind of past together. Now the comedy and the man on the stage is the kind of main event of this book and it, we slowly see as the story goes on and as he does his comedy and his kind of spiel on stage that he's almost somewhat like losing his mind and the audience is kind of in two minds as to whether to stay or leave or support him or whether he's being like incredibly offensive or there's something wrong with him or something deeper is going on or, or like you know whether they stay like five more minutes like the big joke is gonna come about and the whole thing was incredibly interesting. Like, this is definitely one that I want to read again because I feel like there's stuff that I miss because you're almost like you know the audience in this book you're trying to work out like what is wrong with this guy or what's going on like what is he saying all this stuff for like what's the bigger picture here and so once you get to the end you maybe understand it a bit more and I, I definitely want to go and read through it all again and, and maybe pick up things that I didn't pick up this first time. Yes this is a fantastic one so I would highly recommend to all. And the final book that I want to share with you today actually is like more of a 4.5 star read so it is my favourite book of the whole month and that is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. To try and explain this book would be a bit of a mission. It is extremely complex. The way the story is told is so interwoven and these histories and like past and future and present and all these things is fantastically written. I, I almost want to know how she planned this story because it is incredibly clever. The story is set in 1866 in New Zealand at the time of the kind of big gold rushes where everyone was out searching for their future, searching for their big break and hoping to find like a big nugget of gold so that they could take it home to their families and things. And so the book starts off in New Zealand in this port and we follow this guy named Walter Moody as he ends up going to this hotel he goes into the kind of smoking room the gentleman's room or whatever and, and picks up a drink and notice that everyone there seemed to just be a bit off like as soon as he walked in everyone went quiet and they're all kind of looking a bit shifty and he soon realizes that all of these people aren't here by accident they have all intended to meet together and he's kind of bust in on what they were all planning on talking about as the story goes on he gets very much involved in these men's business and everything that has happened happened in this town prior to him arriving. There's murder, there's drugs, there's sex, there's just crazy. It's like Agatha Christie but set in New Zealand. It's just a really fun time. One thing I would mention about this one though is that there are a lot of characters and a lot of male characters in specific so I think this is probably what knocked it down for me a little bit is because 
there were so many characters it was sometimes quite hard to remember who was who and because most of them were men it was even harder to like keep a track of like all of these people's stories and everything all the time so it's definitely one that you had to keep reading otherwise if you know if you left it for a week or two you would you wouldn't remember what was going on so thank you to everyone who encouraged me to read this one and said that you thought I would like it because I very much did and I would highly recommend it to everyone so there we are those are all the books that I read in July I hope you enjoyed this video do let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them as always I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter everything I've mentioned today down below I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon bye